consider this for a moment. The only water source you have turns too salty for human consumption. Instead of providing nourishment to your crops, it starts destroying them. Your means of livelihood are taken away and you are turned homeless. Consider this happening to you because it is happening to the hundreds of thousands of people who live in the delta of the Indus. Rivers have given life to new civilizations on their banks for millennia and the Indus has been no less fruitful. Its delta used to be large, recently designated as a Ramsar site. It is one of the richest ecosystems in the country, supporting the livelihood of thousands of people. This is not so anymore. The sea has intruded into the river that is the lifeblood to these people, bringing with it misery and hunger. Indus is the sixth largest river in the world and carries more water every year than the river Nile of Egypt. But its great flow was curtailed as more and more dams were constructed on its course. First came the Sakha barrage and then Kotri, Guddu and later on the huge Perbela dam. While on the one hand these dams have helped the country by irrigating many areas, they have also been a cause of degradation in others. It is necessary that we protect uh, not only the coastal area uh, from erosion but also the mangroves from deterioration. The mangroves will need some amount of fresh water for their survival. The delta supported vast expanses of mangroves, one of the largest arid climate mangroves in the world. These forests were a source of food for over 100,000 people and provided fodder for their cattle. The mangroves also served as breeding grounds for fish and shrimp, which made Karachi famous for its fishing industry. Agriculture was possible on the fertile lands of the delta. तो पानी पर सबसे बड़ा हक जो है वो इंडस डेल्टा के लोगों का है एक आदमी जो है वो बिल्कुल मरने के किनारे पर सकरात में है इंडस डेल्टा जो है बिल्कुल सकरात में पड़ा हुआ The famous pearl fish considered to be the delicacy of Sindh was found wherever the river flowed in the province It formed a protein rich staple food for the indigenous people Large tracts of the Indus were flanked by the dense foliage of riverine forests, producing valuable timber and providing a rich habitat for wildlife. The waters of the Indus are now diverted upstream and the riverbed below Kotri remains virtually dry most of the year. This is a huge riverbed, at some places as wide as 16 kilometers. The pressure of the outflowing river water used to keep the sea at bay. But now the diversion of water has made the bed susceptible to seawater intrusion. The saline water of the sea is inundating the lands that were irrigated by fresh water. This is a death knell to the crops and has affected over 500,000 hectares of fertile land in District Thatta alone. 33% of land in the districts of Thatta and Badin have been taken over by the sea. The underground water channels which provided fresh water for drinking and agriculture are now being replaced by undrinkable saline water. Fisheries are also being affected. The Palla, for example, used to swim against the river current from the coastal areas right up to Multan. Today, it is not found above the Kofi barrage anymore. Barrages have blocked its path. 
A few decades ago, the annual catch of Palla was around 10,000 tons. Today, this has dropped to just 4,000 tons annually. These ecological changes are not isolated events. They impact the people living in that environment by decreasing livelihoods and raising poverty. We don't have uh, uh, many jobs in that particular part of Sindh. So they are committing suicides and uh, 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 they are like uh, going through very terrible time. Desolation follows the journey of the sea inland. Katie Bandar was the traditional converge of the river Indus and the sea. Now only the sea surrounds it inundating over 46,000 hectares of land. Today, these people don't find any drinking water where their ancestors used to irrigate fields of red rice as well as thrive on a rich industry of fresh water fishing. A lot of people living in the Indus Delia have migrated because the river erosion has taken place and there are various other impacts, say river and forest have also been affected. Embittered and deserted, the people are forced to use most of their earnings, sometimes even borrow money, to spend not on food, clothing or shelter, but on the purchase of daily drinking water. We say that where there is water, there is life. Now there is no water. तो उन लोगों की लाइफ भी नहीं है पीने के लिए तो क्या लेकिन गोसल मैयत के गोसल के लिए भी पानी उनको नसीब नहीं होता है अपवर्ड फ्रॉम केटी बंदर अलोंग द इंडस इस तालुका खारोचान द सिचुएशन हियर इज नॉट वेरी डिफरेंट व्हाट लुक्स लाइक अ रिवर इज इन फैक्ट एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द सी एग्रीकल्चर इज बिकमिंग इंक्रीजिंगली डिफिकल्ट वास्ट एकर्स ऑफ बनाना फार्म्स once a hallmark of this area are now under threat. The yield is suffering and if the situation continues, the farms will be gone forever. The indigenous species of the riverine forests here are dying. They are being replaced by others of little economic value. Here also, potable water has become a rarity. The village Darvesh in Ghorabari is about 54 kilometers away from the sea. On the map you will find this area marked on the banks of the river Indus. But this is not a river bank anymore. Realistically speaking, this is sea. This is how far the sea water has intruded inland. In a recent study, salinity was measured to be 5,000 milligrams per liter in a sample of water taken from the village Dervesh. This is double the maximum limit of salinity for fresh water. Nature demands balance. When we disturb the balance of nature, we face its revenge. The sources of life themselves turn into the agents of destruction. Katie Bandar, Kharochan and Ghorabari are only three of the areas where the lives of the people have been affected by the changes in their environment. Over 100,000 hectares of land in these areas has been damaged. The people, traditionally dependent on agriculture, have become poorer. They have lost much of their cultivable land for rice, wheat, maize and bananas. This, a recent study estimates, translates into an economic loss of 266 million rupees in five years. The loss in crop production is estimated nearly 40 million rupees over the same period. The link between environmental degradation 
and increase in poverty is no more an academic discussion. It is an issue of life and death. For many thousands of people who are forced to starve or migrate due to this problem. The ecological damage in this area is obvious. What is perhaps not visible are the social and economic losses. In the long run, all damage to the natural environment casts a shadow on the socio-economic development of the nation and the livelihood of the people. Human beings are a part of the environment they live in. There cannot be any other way of looking at life. The situation can be reversed through proper management. Along with implementation of existing policies, a proper management plan can reverse the existing situation. This girl's ancestors have lived here for hundreds of years. Her past is rooted here. Her forefathers buried here. She is leaving this land in search of a better life. The question is, will she find it? Or will she also descend into oblivion like many others before her? She is our future. Who is responsible for hers?